Hi kids! Um, today we have lesson 16 in module 3 and it is just one of those kind of weird ones that it doesn't really fit into any module and yet we kind of use it in every module so it just happens to be here lesson 16. Uh, so it's really about relating sizes of things but even more than that, it's about using the words in the sentence and making sense of what they mean. Because certain words in the sentences will be connected with certain operations or mean certain things. Um, like when I see is, I think equals. And when I see of, I think multiply. But we'll kind of get into that more as we have more specific examples. So um, the objective for today is to explore part to whole relationships. Explore it, because we love exploring these things. So uh, the directions say, draw the following ribbons. And gosh, it looks a lot like a tape diagram. So that's really what we're going to be using it and applying it as. When finished, compare your work to your partners. It's so nice when you guys are in class, because we do, we compare them and you'll hold up yours and your partners will be completely different. And it's just kind of nice to see like, what's going wrong here? Because we learn a lot from our mistakes. And so this is really a great learning opportunity to learn from what you do wrong. It's not a bad thing. So let's take a look at it. One ribbon, this is one ribbon. The piece shown below is one third of the whole. This, this is what I like to do. This is one third of the whole. So first of all, identify what the important information is, then complete the drawing. So if this piece is one out of three parts, then what you need to do is draw the missing pieces. And so really that's what this lesson is all about. If this is one third, then I need another third and I need another third in order to make the three thirds, which makes one. So that's all it is, okay? So use the language to <clears throat> complete these ribbons. One ribbon right here. But this time, the piece shown below is, this piece is four-fifths of the whole. So now, this is four pieces. So now I'm going to divide within this ribbon. And what I'm missing is the fifth piece. So right here... Now this is what your ribbon should look like. Four out of five. It's like saying this is four-fifths, this is five-fifths, which means one. Okay? Easy peasy, right? I totally get this. This is fun. Now on this one, they don't give us any pictures, and we are going to draw the two ribbons. We're going to label them A and B. But they give us some um, words and things that we have to associate with each other. So one third of A, okay? So one third of A is equal to all of B. Ooh, okay? One third of A is equal to all of B. So if I have this part, okay, and this is one third, this is one third, and it's equal to all of B, then what do I have to do for A? I have to extend and draw the second third and extend and draw the third third. So that when you compare, uh, you have the one-third of A is equal to all of B. So your A ribbon should be three times as long as B. Pretty cool. But now we have three ribbons, C, D, and E. 
C, D, and E. C is half the length of D. E is twice as long as D. So we have these comparative sizes, and all you have is that C is half, and E is double or two times as much as D. So I like to kind of draw D and say, okay, well, C is half of D. Okay, so if D is about yay big, then C is half of it. But E is twice as long. Sorry, it's kind of crooked. But that's the way it goes sometimes. And so now you just go back and say, okay, if, if this is all of D, so take C out when you're comparing D and E. E is twice as long as D. Yep, here's D. E is twice as long, or times two. When you're comparing C, C is half of what D is. So you just make these kind of comparative shapes, use the language that they're showing you, and then really just check yourself and try to talk through it. The homework is very similar uh, to this. Okay, half of Robert's piece of wire is equal to two-thirds of Maria's wire half of his wire is equal to two out of three pieces of Maria's wire. Now we have more information. So we can draw a picture. Don't let the rest of it throw you. The total length of their wires is 10 feet, which we'll put off to the side, and we don't have to measure or account for that when we draw the wires. How much longer is Robert's wire than Maria's? And I remember when I first did these problems and I was like, what, I don't get it. And we had to talk about it with all the teachers because it's like, do they want an exact answer? Do they want it in fraction form? So let's start drawing and I'll show you the answer in a minute and then you can see what I'm talking about. So half of Robert's piece of wire is equal to two thirds. So if, let's just say I've got Robert and Maria and half of his wire, okay, do, do, do is equal to two out of three pieces of Maria's, okay? So let's just go ahead and divide his into four pieces so that I can see the total uh, amount of pieces and compare them and then double check. So if I have this, that's equal to this, okay, so my drawing is matching. This still extends out and this is extra. The total length of their wires is 10 feet. Okay, so how much longer is Robert's wire than Maria's? So it's kind of an odd, um, it's kind of an odd picture and calculation, but basically what we're doing is we're taking the 10 and we're dividing it by seven. And, and this is kind of leading us into the next module. But if you take the 10 feet and you divide it into the seven pieces, what we get is 10 sevenths. And so that's, really the answer that the, the bookmakers are looking for, which is kind of strange to me. Um, and so then we can solve this because remember every one of these fractions is a division problem. And so 10 divided by seven would be seven fitting into 10 one whole time with three left over. And so it's one and three sevenths feet. Um, so Robert's wire is 10 sevenths feet longer. L longer. Longer than Maria's. And that's really uh, where we're gonna stop with that one. Okay, so I just remember that was a weird one when I first started, but that's what they're looking for. That's what it says in the answer key. 
And uh, so sorry if that's just a weird one. It is. But let's go on to half of Sarah's wire. The next problem is equal to two-fifths of Daniel's. And now we have Chris, a third person, has three times as much as Sarah. In all, their wire measures six feet. How long is Sarah's wire in feet? So let's again, we've got uh, Sarah, Daniel, and Chris. Put some initials. Um, half of Sarah's wire. Let's give her first the whole wire and then cut it in half. Half of Sarah's wire is equal to two-fifths. This is two pieces out of five. So I'm going to have this one, two, three, four, roughly five. And this is Daniel's. Okay. And then Chris has three times as much as Sarah. Uh-oh, I don't have much room. But let's make Sarah's one. And then we'll go approximately the same size. And then approximately the same size. So that if I was to look at how Daniel's is broken up into fifths, and then I look at Sarah's and I break hers up into fourths, and then we have this piece right here of Chris, this would also be broken up, as would each of these. And this is going to be one of those key components of having a tape diagram so that you can compare everything. Because when we have our total measurement in all, this is six feet. What becomes vital, and this is why when I was even starting... Um, you know, as a teacher trying to figure this out, I'm like, what? they don't give us enough information. These problems are so stupid. These people who wrote the problems, they just hate children. They hate, they hate us. Oh, it was terrible. And then I finally figured it out. It's like, oh, well, you have to use the tape diagram because the tape diagram is filling in the missing piece. And so uh, really it's going to be the six feet that we're dividing into the, all the numbers of pieces. So it's, four here and five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And did I count right? Four, eight, 12. Oh, that's so funny. So <laughs> this is always, God, every day it's like, what's going on? So um, let me just double check because what I have is 21. And I'm feeling like that doesn't look like 21. 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20, 21. Is it? Oh, jeez. 4, 8, 12. It is. Oops, there it goes. You know, you should just watch these videos just for the fun of it because something is always going sideways. Anyway, <laughs> we got stuff flying all over the place. So 6 divided by 21 is really what you're supposed to do. Um, and again, it's just those weird questions. So six over 21, and that's how we leave it, uh, except that we can do the division. So on a sidebar, what I had done before was I said, okay, well, if six is divided by 21, now you don't have to do this. This is this is like I'm digressing. But 6 divided by 21, remember when we were talking about every fraction is a division problem? This stuff doesn't really make numerical sense to me because I always want to have like a hard and fast answer. And so this isn't divisible here. And then you can go and you can start this long division problem. And it kind of goes on for a while. Um, I can't get 3 because it goes over, so it would be 42. And I, what I want to do is I want to just show you that when you have um, this that you can set up, what we end up with, with the six, each piece is six twenty-firsts, that if you solve it, you're going to end up with about one and one-seventh feet, which for the one-seventh, this is how much you get in a decimal value. And I said, okay, well, let's take this and we'll prove it. And so we'll multiply this 21 times. And so you can take the individual length of each piece 
and multiply it 21 times and eventually end up with the six feet. So each problem should be taking the whole, breaking it up into parts. What is the size of each piece? It's six twenty-first of a foot. What does that look like? And, um, and then this is Sarah's wire down here. Sarah, Sarah's wire down here. And it's four of them, okay? Remember, because once you find one, you can find the amount of any. And so if you add up these four, you get 24 21sts, which is one and three 21sts, which can be simplified. Divide both these by three to get one and one seventh. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, well, what, you know, what does this mean? And wouldn't you rather have an exact amount? You can do all that. Ugh. I just sometimes, I still don't love these problems. But anyway, <laughs> there it is. There's our super fun math lesson for the day, lesson 16. <laughs> um, I hope this was a fun one for you. It was super fun for me. And uh, if it was, click subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. We'll see what else can go wrong. Oh, look, it's only 16 minutes. Have a great day. Bye.